How's it going guys? We're going to talk about the 2020 Daytona 500. I was planning to make a video on it right after the race, but because of obvious circumstances that I'm not going to touch on too much about on the uh, in this video. I know I asked you guys on Twitter, do you want me to make a video? I didn't know if I really wanted to talk about any of this. Obviously, thoughts and prayers go out to Ryan Newman. He does not have life-threatening injuries, but it is pretty serious. And uh, hopefully no one speculates about what the injuries are for now, but I'm not going to touch on uh, the wreck. I'm not going to really talk about it that much. And um, yeah, it was just a racing incident and that's it. So we're just going to respect uh, the situation. And again, hopefully Ryan is going to be okay. Um, but let's talk about the race. Let's talk about the 500, which was, even though it was held on a Monday, it was a good race and it was a really solid race and until the end. I think it would not be right to not talk about it because actually, like I, like I told you guys, I want to make videos about things I want to talk about. And I wanted to talk about this Daytona 500 until the end happened and then, you know, it put me in a little bit of a weird situation. But it was nice to see um, over the community, uh, the NASCAR community, everyone was or did a very good job being respectful, including the media. It was the media not really associated with NASCAR that didn't really follow the right protocols when it comes to privacy and respectfulness when it comes to you know not speculating about things so um, but everyone within NASCAR and everyone uh, within that community did a great job and uh, I was proud of everyone there and it was nice to see the fans uh, really rally together so that was nice it was a good sense of togetherness after a great race but unfortunate ending the race overall like I said was really good you obviously had moments of train uh, of the train but what I really liked seeing especially at the end of fuel runs Drivers were struggling with the handling of their cars. It's not like bumpy Daytona where the bumps really upset the car. It's more of a dirty air kind of style Daytona or like a tight day, uh, like the speeds are so high and you have a lot of horsepower that, and there's so much dirty air around that you get a little bit tight or you get a little bit loose, you get aero, tighter aero loose and that's where the handling goes away. But as the tires wear down, those effects come more and more in the pack. And then you saw guys who had strong cars come to the front no matter what lane they were in. I think there was one moment late in the race when the Chevy Brigade that were catching the Fords with about like 20 laps to go, they came and they it didn't matter what lane they were in because they all had four tires while the Fords only had two. And those guys just went outside, inside, outside, inside, just sliding the lanes and getting right up towards the front. So it was nice to see that because what I really miss about Daytona and Talladega is a little bit of tire wear, a little bit of strategy in terms of the handling of the cars. And ever since we have uh, repaved these tracks to be perfection on highways, basically, like, y you don't get that. And it was nice to see a little bit of that. Uh, and it wasn't completely, like I, like I said, it, it just a little bit, you know? Hopefully, as the, as the years go on, Daytona ages more and more, and we could get um, a little bit more bumps into the track. I don't think that might happen just because of the way they repaved it back in 2011, so I don't... I don't think that's gonna happen. But if you let it wear long enough, you know, maybe like 2035, you, know, <laughs> you never know. Another thing that fans were disappointed with over the recent years has been the manufacturer, well, not even recent years, recent races, months, you know, last few races, the manufacturer deals. Um, Chevy working with only Chevy's Fords, only working with Fords. I think in the Daytona 500, you throw that out of the window because everyone wants to win. At the other play races, maybe you see that a little bit more, but at the 500, everyone needs to get themselves in a position. That's why I like to see if there were four Fords in line, that fourth Ford was like, all right, I'm not, if I stay here, I'm not going to go anywhere. So you saw certain drivers making moves that benefit themselves. And that brings out the best racing. When every driver is trying to make a move for themselves, you get the best racing just organically. It just happens naturally. When these teams want to work together and line up eight of their cars or something, eight of their manufacturer cars and just run in a line, that's where it gets a little bit disappointing. So you just can't let the teams do that and I think just the nature of the Daytona 500 the teams didn't do that. The drivers didn't do that. They obviously worked together as they should but it wasn't anything out of the ordinary. There was strategy in play but there was also I need to position myself into the right moments and I really enjoyed the race um, basically up until the first big one. The big one's always gonna happen. I'm not saying that I'm angry that a big one did happen. A big one will always happen. It was after that big one. You, to see the more wrecks and more wrecks and it's just like when you get to the end of these races now and i remember last year's day 2500 was the same way we had a big pack and then a big one and then another wreck and then another wreck talladega as well it happens again you know you get to the end of these races and it's wreck and wreck and wreck and it's not really anyone's fault it's just us 
it's just NASCAR needing to recognize as a sport, like, okay, the drivers have maybe a little bit too many toys to play with. Um, because if you put yourself in the driver's shoes, you have to block. If you don't block, you're not going to win. And, and for example, well, actually, for this race, I mean, the guy who didn't block did win. But you know what I, what I mean. Like, if you, guys, if you don't block, then you're in trouble. And so d down the back straightaway on this race, you know, Denny Hamlin decided not to block, and he still ended up winning the race just by the way these, these runs are manipulated. The runs, when the drivers want to get them, as they learn more about this package, is just so much. And it's because the spoiler on these cars are so big. They have the horsepower now, and the hole in the, 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 the cars that punch a massive hole in the air is just nuts. And then you have the side drafting as well, and it's, it is all just absolute chaos when it comes to any of these races, because during most of the time of the race, you have drivers lifting. A lot of the time during the race, drivers are not full throttle. But when you get to the end of the race, everyone's full throttle. and becomes a different style of race. And it becomes very dangerous. And I think that's what we saw um, last night. Is It just, the closing rate is too fast. It, there's no time to make a decision. Depending on who you're pushing, your bumpers might not line up. If a Chevy's pushing a Ford, it might not work because of the Chevy's nose. If a Toyota is pushing a Ford, or if even two Fords are pushing, pushing each other, if you just don't line it up right, big consequences can happen. Because when it comes to the end of these races, you still want to tandem, and I think that's what we saw. You want to just push all the time, but it's not like the COT days where the cars are very stable and then you had the two car tandems all the time. We, we found something in the middle that's now very dangerous towards the end of races, but I think, in my opinion, brings a very good style of racing for the first, if the drivers know how to use it and not be too cautious, it brings a good style of racing for the first 170 laps. It's just that when you get to the end of these races, it's almost too much of a change because the runs are just too big. And I feel bad for NASCAR in a way because they can't really predict that and how the drivers drive. And I feel bad for the drivers as well because they're basically put into a position where you can't lift and you have, and, and we know this going 200 miles per hour, you have milliseconds, you know, to make a decision. But now you usually, like, th there will be a car, three car lengths back, and then two seconds later, your spotter barely has enough time to relay the information that that car is on your quarter panel. That, that's how crazy these runs are. And it's becoming hectic. And and, then, and we saw that at the end. But it's, it's a hard dilemma to go with because it's good. It... In a way, it's good racing that's just a little bit too dangerous. I, I kind of relay it back to 2000, 2001, where, in my opinion, that package is the best package NASCAR ever had. But because of an incident, you know, they had to change it. However, during the, that, that style of racing, if you watch it back, I, I think it wasn't as dangerous as it is now in terms of the style of racing. Obviously, these cars now are safer. But back then in 2000, 2001, you had three wide racing, you know, all over the place. But the runs weren't huge. You can go, if you go watch those races back, the runs weren't that big. And now the runs are just, just nuts. And you have, there's just nothing you can do other than block. And then you get wrecked. I mean, we see it over and over. And it's not even, sometimes you don't even have to block. You could be entering a corner and the guy behind you makes a move. And all of a sudden the air just gets messed up and you're going spinning. And it's just something that's like, at that point, it's like, what can you do? It's, it's nuts. I don't think we saw that yesterday. I think there was a few instances, uh, especially late in the race. I remember Joey Logano getting really loose entering turn three where a driver would cut below his left rear and luckily they saved it. And you know, that's a dangerous move, but that's something that's going on. Yesterday we saw just the, the bumpers not aligning, a, a, a push hard, uh, a push that went too hard here or a push that went too hard there. And that's what caused the wrecks. And the only time I'm gonna talk about the end of the race here is just, you know, over that incident, is uh, the fact that Ryan Blaney looked like he might have won the race. Um, but what makes it really kind of heartbreaking, to be honest, is Ryan Blaney gets to the yellow line, right? And he doesn't move his car once he gets to the yellow line. He made a move, he made, a, he made an outside move and then an inside move. But once that inside move didn't work, he, you could see him legitimately just say, like, okay, I'm, I'm not going to make another move because of that yellow line rule. And unfortunately, because he didn't make another move, just the momentum of, of Newman's car, it, it misaligned the bumpers because Newman was blocking, but he couldn't, 
he couldn't stop his car from going to the left and it just glided along the bumper and while Blaney's like, I'm not gonna make a move, I'm just gonna push and it, it hooked him. So that's actually the really sad part is because Blaney legitimately was going to push Ryan Newman to the win once Newman successfully blocked. And he did successfully block and then it sent Newman to the wall. So it's just like, at that point, it's like, what can a driver do to avoid these wrecks? You have a driver legitimately not trying to make a move and keeping the car, if you look at the wheel, he is dead straight. He's not moving the wheel in any direction. He's center on Newman's bumper and it's still wrecks him because of Newman's momentum. And it's just like, it's like, what the hell, man? It's, it's like, what? that's just, just crazy at that point. What can you do? I don't know about you guys, but for me, I didn't know who won the race because I was in the living room with my parents and they were just kind of watching and we were just joking about like how this race never ends. And I had to take care, you know, I have a dog now, so I had to take care of the dog and make sure he was all fine. So I was in the living room and I just saw the wreck and I was like, oh God, that's a wreck. I had no idea who won. I thought Blaney won. I, I'll be dead serious. I thought Blaney won. I didn't realize Denny Hamlin was even there on the outside. I thought he was done for, but I forgot that Hamlin was pushing Blaney and then got to the outside. And um, so Denny Hamlin is now a three-time Daytona 500 champion. I think we're seeing basically the, the best NASCAR driver to never win a championship. I know a lot of people um, put Mark Martin in that category. Um, Rusty Wallace, did Rusty win a championship? Oh God, I can't remember if Rusty won a championship or not. Oh no, he did he win a champ? Oh no, did Rusty Wallace win a championship? I'm having a brain fart. I know Mark never did. I'll look it up after the video. But Hamlin's putting himself in that, well, I don't think he wants to put himself in that conversation. He needs to win a championship. But Denny has been just so good. And uh, I think we saw that last year. We, and he's such a good plate racer, too. He's understanding the package. And something I always like to, to say is that the most aggressive drivers usually end up wrecked. But they also usually end up winning. We see that with Elliott, Blaney, Kozlowski, Logano, Hamlin. I think you see just aggressive drivers either in the wall or winning in victory lane. And... And I think that is just the way to go. And, and we, we're seeing that more and more in these play races. I think it will change in 2021 without however that car races at these tracks. The drivers have to relearn again. But for right now, if you are aggressive at these tracks, man, you can win. And Denny Hamlin is one of the most aggressive drivers out there. And he is putting on a hell of a show. He, if he keeps it up, he, he may, might win the championship this year because I think Phoenix is a good track for him. And hopefully he can maybe uh do something but like i've been kind of jumping around all, all video guys um this race was a really solid race it's just the ending it becomes a little bit too much and uh, you kind of want those races where which one was it? i think it was 2015 uh, 20 i was at that race it was gordon's last daytona 500 but I remember some of the racing before the end of the 2015 500 and I was just, that was nuts. There were three wide, two wide constantly. And I think it was, I think it was that 2013 to 2017 package where you had this bubble of air and it's fun. It's funny looking back at it because we're always going to be nostalgic and always go back to the past. The complaint back then was there's this bubble of air that the leader, you can't pass the leader, right? But in a weird way, it made it safer and it still made the racing good. So the leader had this bubble of air and you had to switch the lanes and stuff, but behind them, you were always getting these runs. And now when it comes to the end of these races, there is no bubble of air anymore. And the funny part is I remember myself specifically and other fans complaining about the bubble of air and saying, oh, NASCAR, get rid of the bubble of air so we can make the racing better without knowing that it becomes too dangerous. So it's like you, you don't know what you want until you actually get it. And now we have no bubble of air and it's, it's becoming just a complete crash fest. And I think if you like entertainment and you like the, the spectacular, that's okay. But if you, if we want to achieve that, that best racing, how can we get the best racing, right? Maybe going back to a little bit more safer kind of racing might do it. Get that, maybe get something that we don't like that bubble of air or something like that, or just slow down the runs a little bit. Does that mean maybe the racing wouldn't be as good? Maybe, maybe it really, it, it could be. But I think sometimes maybe we complain about the wrong things. And so now we have gotten to a point where it's kind of too much. And I feel, again, I feel bad for the drivers because I think a lot of times now you hear drivers and teams complain about plate racing. Owners complain about it because how much it costs right now because you're always I mean, there's only like usually seven eight nine clean cars at the end of these races right now And the rest are just totaled 
and it, it's a lot of money for the owners. It's a lot of stress for the drivers. It's a lot of stress for the teams as well. And yes, that is plate racing, but there is a way to do plate racing. And I think uh, relieves some of that a little bit. Again, that'll be a conversation for another day to how to do it. I have no idea. You know, we'll have to wait to see how 2021 plays out and how that car races. But just for this Daytona 500, again, it was a really good race. I really liked how the community handled everything. Um, again, thoughts and prayers of Ryan Newman. And uh, if you're disappointed that I didn't really talk about that wreck or anything, give my opinion on it. Or I talked about it a little bit, like I said, the Blaney situation. But um, I'm not ta I'm not showing the finish. I'm not showing any clips. I'm not uh, really talking about the race winner or the race results where people finished. I'm not even going to talk about any of that. I'm just giving my basic opinion on the race, what I thought it was, how, how it was, and just certain opinions here and there. And uh, that's pretty much it. That's all I really wanted to say. Um, like I said, guys, I'll upload when I wanted to talk about something, and uh, I wanted to make sure I did this video in a respectful way, so hopefully I did that. Um, and again, if you guys want to leave a comment down below with anything that you want to say about the race, about the ending, about the winner, um, about certain uh, finishers in certain positions, I mean, I think maybe I should be respectful to some of the to some of the guys who, who finished really well. Chris Buescher in third, David Reagan fourth, Brendan Gaughan in seventh, Corey LaJoy in eighth. And uh, I think John Hunter Nemechek got 11th. So those are all really good finishes for those guys in a, in a Daytona 500. Um, so it's, it's really good for them. Other than that, guys, if you like the video, make sure you hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, uh, sorry that I haven't been uploading. Um, I just haven't really wanted to upload anything at the moment. So uh, if the races are interesting and I want to talk about something, then I will make race reviews. And uh, hopefully I, I'm, I might not get them out the day after a race because of other responsibilities. Uh, follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you're not already. And I will see you guys later. Hope you're having a great day. Again, thoughts and prayers with Brian Newman. And hopefully he recovers well. And again, hopefully you guys are enjoying your Monday. And take care. Peace out.